The other day, Diego and I were out driving. Beautiful rolling landscape, beautiful hills covered in green grass, and he says there's almost nothing for the bees to eat here. And this is because people are mowing the food for the bees. Having a well-rounded diet is important to bees, just like with humans. If, if we were to eat uh, nothing but iceberg lettuce all day, every day, we might be alive, but we probably wouldn't be very healthy. 2018-2019, the honeybee losses nationally were 40%. We had an incredibly successful year. We had a 14% loss rate, and we attribute a lot of that to the nutrition that the bees have. Our guest today has been keeping bees since he was a teenager in Italy. As an adult, he cultivated colonies for himself and restaurant owners on rooftops in New York City. In Virginia, he is dedicated to passing along his passion for this time-honored science to a new generation. Join us as we visit Diego de Corte, co-founder of the Elysium Honey Company. Come on! From 95 until uh, 2006, so many things changed in beekeeping. And most of all is related to this parasite that is the Varroa uh, destructor. So it um, really changed the world of beekeeping and the way in which now we are facing and working with bees. And so coming here, uh, my biggest problem was really actually related to environment. And we're here in your backyard. Mm -hmm. So this yes. is sort of your nursery. This is yes. where you begin cultivating all of these colonies. Mm -hmm. Right now you have about 19 yeah, this hives, is, but you had... I had something, th th this year I built up uh, almost 70 hives. Wow. Because we want to have actually uh, a local production of queen, a local production of colonies. So they well, are custom. Let's, let's peek inside one yes. and now talk to us about it, about mm -hmm. how it works, how the bees work, how beekeeping Absolutely. works. Uh, this is reaching what I consider, how to say, maturity, because this is a colony that still needs to grow a little bit. Uh, to, it's to going what? to reach probably the 60,000, okay. 65, that is okay. really the number. The frames are signed with, uh, with numbers, because when you take a frame out of the hive, mm -hmm. you see the bees are really calm in this moment. You wanted to put it back exactly in the same position. And so it's really important to know how it's oriented. They absolutely know everything inside. Yeah. If you start changing position, they get actually confused. Oh. Oh, this okay. is a frame that they are still uh, finishing building. There is uh, plenty of nectar, uh, all the new wax, they built everything. And you see that here you can already identify all the workers. And then you have some of the, this is the drones. Here you have larvae, and here you have the bees that are going through metamorphosis to become a, uh, an adult bee, okay? Right. And I saw the queen. She's checking all the cells, here she is, because she wants absolutely make sure that each cell has an egg inside. Actually, look, look, she is going probably to lie an egg. And you see how small she is at the end. And, uh, she completely is in a complete camouflage with all the other one. It's not easy to, to see her. Right now in Virginia, we are importing a lot of hives and queens from out of state. And it's imperative for us as Virginians to get a local breed stock. We will take a frame of eggs and we will pop out day three, just hatching into larva. And we will take some royal jelly and we will put them in special cups. We send them to a learning or nursery apiary where we breed these queens, and 16 days later, just 16 days, we have queens. So the queen, she goes out and mates with how many? 12, 14, 20 drones. And, then and she mates only once in her life, and uh, she's able to keep actually the sperm alive in a chamber for all her life with time they lose a little bit their uh, capacity they're laying uh, less eggs D and, and do they just die then um, you know actually uh, the, the bees uh, they actually decide many mm. things is a democracy <laughs> is, a, is a strange uh, interaction I was when, afraid of that. when the bees are understanding that their queen is no longer perfect for the colony uh -huh. um, they actually substitute her so it's a new young queen strong that is right. going to continue 
right. the life of the colony. I think you were telling me that you lose about 300 bees per day. But you know, every day. But yes. you end up with 60 to 70,000 bees. A queen in this so moment is lying her weight in eggs every day. So right. there are, you know, more than 1,000, 1,500. Sometimes they go up to 2,000 a day. They start flying out of the hive when they are around 20 days old. And during those 20 days in which they are inside the hive, they cover really a lot of different uh, uh, chores. And so they start like uh, cleaners, then nursing, then they do all different tasks. The last task is to be uh, the one that are outside, you know, really guarding the hive. And then on the 20th, 21st day, they actually start going out and they start foraging. I want to talk about education too, because yes. one of your main goals at Elysium is to educate yeah. a new generation of beekeepers. You work with the Waldorf School, yes. you work with Western Albemarle, and you have a UVA intern, you work yes, with Yes, we are Sweetbriar. working also with Sid Breyer. Uh, we have a UVA intern, we have, uh, I'm actually also working uh, in part with the um, uh, Department of Forestry, trying to develop a little bit a new model of beekeeping. When you see him beekeeping, it's, it's slow and methodical and he tries to disturb them as little as possible. Diego is very concerned about how can we work with the bees rather than trying to force our opinions of what they should be doing onto the bees. Um, and I really admire that as a method. When you are in a hive, it's very, very quiet and noisy at the same time. They're all industrious, they're always working, and it's my job to work with them and around them. So I know to slow down, to speed up, to get out of there. <laughs> you, know, you just have to uh, kind of relax and have your objective at all times. You can't waste their time. I'm a former teacher at the Charlottesville Waldorf School, and for many years we had wanted to bring bees to our campus. But it was a long process, and he talked us through choosing the location for the hives and creating food plots for the hives, making certain that there was enough food on our 13-acre campus to feed the bees, so that they would be happy. A pollinator garden is a diverse planting of wildflowers and forbs and herbaceous plants that are providing food for bees, butterflies, moths, and other pollinating insects. Bees can sometimes focus on one particular flower and make one very unique honey, but with all of the different species in here, they blend it and we get a, a, a very interesting expression. All right, let's try one of your honeys. Okay, so we are going to start from uh, a tulip poplar because it's actually the biggest uh, actually production that we have uh, all over the East Coast. The tulip poplar is blooming fr literally from Georgia to Maine. Tastes a little bit of uh, uh, molasses um, and is really floral. Okay. In this moment, this honey is uh, starting uh, crystallizing. Which so is a good thing. Absolutely, because actually crystallization is a guarantee of quality in a honey and s something that we can absolutely mm. recognize. So that was yummy, let's try another one. Oh, absolutely. So the other uh, production that we did last year is uh, this excellent uh, honeydew. And so honeydew is really a particular kind of uh, honey that the bees are producing when they are actually harvesting uh, from uh, aphids. And so this is actually not uh, sugar that is uh, coming out of a nectar but is a sugar that is coming out uh, really directly from sap, wow. sap of the trees. Mm -hmm. and, and that's very yeah, different from the other one. This is absolutely different. You see also the color and um, is really intense. Yeah, okay? very different, uh, but really also good. Also high acidity. And then, if you want, mm -hmm. uh, we can go to something that is even uh, stronger in terms of character. Okay. And is a honey that is coming from um, uh, the Alps in Italy and is a blend of uh, uh, two trees that are blooming together actually in this moment on our Alps. Why would a local beekeeper mm -hmm. be buying and selling honey from Europe? In Europe, uh, they have a really higher standard. The honey in, in Europe uh, can 
come only from the nectar of plant and right. sugar of that is coming from nectar of plant. And here okay. people can put corn syrup. But here, uh, but here is a little different. Uh, so uh, you know, honey is not uh, considered uh, how to say an aliment is considered a product. The FDA's um, standards are a little bit more loose. Right. And so we are trying hard to uh, bring here honey that is real honey. And the other part is really related to education and to people. Uh, people, they need to know what they are eating. Right, right. We All are, of your labels have the beekeeper's name absolutely. on it where it um, is from. Uh, right. I know all my beekeepers, so that is so important. Yeah, you talk about some of the challenges of being a beekeeper, yet you continue to do this and you are trying to inspire younger generations to do this. Mm. Why? But absolutely, because uh, I think that is really important uh, to, have, uh, to be aware of what is nature. Bees are almost a pretext for me. What is really important to do is uh, to have flowers and uh, to encourage really a natural environment. And I believe you've described beekeeping to me previously as sweaty, <laughs> stinky yeah. and heavy yes, work. Yes, absolutely. Um, what is your main piece of advice? Oh, uh, you know, um, a lot of passions. It involves uh, all your uh, senses because it is then taste, smell, colors. It's absolutely outstanding. So that is beekeeping for me. Thank okay. you, Diego. <laughs> beekeeping is an aging profession and we need a lot more young people involved and engaged. In order for us to make these environmental moves that are positive, we need to intertwine the economy. And so I think if we get people who are trained in how to make environmentalism profitable, then our world is going to be really positive moving forward. Well, there are some very easy things that uh, any homeowner can do to help the bees. One of the easiest things is to stop mowing and weed eating so much. And then as simple as planting a small wildflower garden, anybody can do that at their home.